Hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it's fun. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and this is Peyton on the radio. And uh, we got to make a name for ourselves. Peyton and Pearl, Pearl, Peyton, something like that. <laughs> Pay Pearl. Pay Pearl. Uh, <laughs> kind of like but, PayPal. But... Uh, we're, we've decided to do a whole lot of videos together, and uh, we're going to be doing one on the new divisions that are come, that they put together now that uh, are, have come out. And they're pretty interesting. And we're going to do our predictions for the East Division today. Uh, we've been talking about it before the video for about an hour now. And uh, we haven't even really come up with it. But we thought, you know what, this is such good material. Why don't we just hit the record button and keep on talking about it? So that's what we're going to do. As well. That's our video today. We're going to look at each team. Uh, it, well, you'll see. You'll see. Anyways, Peyton, um, we we got a you got a series going on right now too. You're all you're 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 kind of trotting away there, trying to get all the teams before the regular season ends. We just did the Ottawa Senators one, and you're doing a series on the off season for each team, right? Yep, yep. We're uh, close. I'm trying to grind them all out before January 13th, and then I could kind of make some Oilers content, which. Oh, there's news. Uh, it's been kind of exploding with tons of news. And uh, all the free agencies are about to be signed. So it's going to be an exciting time. Hockey is going to be back. Basketball's back. It's a, a great time of the year already. Yeah, we might even be. We were just talking about doing maybe some lives together in the evenings. So we watch, you know, for that. That'll be a lot of fun. We just once we get on banter, man, it's fun. We'd love to have you. Thanks for hitting the subscribe and the bell for both of our channels. How it helps out a lot. Hit that like button if you like it. Hit the don't like if you don't like it. We don't mind. It doesn't hurt us at all. We we love the haters. We love you. We do. So do it so. If that's how you feel like doing. Okay, let's look at it. Uh, this is such an interesting division. Uh, when we first started talking about it, uh, when I first looked at it, uh, my head kind of exploded because it could go in so many different ways. But I'll start with you, Peyton. Uh, let's start with... Basically, which teams are which? Is there a team or two that are for sure in this division for sure to be top four? You would yeah. Say. For the Eastern Division, uh, for my top four, I went with uh, Washington, Philly, Boston. Now the the the, the top the the number four spot was it, it's super hard because like we were talking about before this was the Sabers, Rangers, Islanders. The Penguins, they all got chances of really coming into that fourth spot. But I picked the Buffalo Sabres for the fact of Taylor Hall coming into the roster. If Mark really explodes this year, Boston could be totally a whole new monster, especially in this division against a Rangers team who's not that great defensively. Islanders, you might struggle against just because of Barry Trotz and their defensive work. But Islanders kind of take a they, they took a huge fall off. They didn't really improve their defensive core this year. They're going to be relying a lot on the young defenseman and Noah Dobson and the Penguins. I don't know. I don't know what the say about the penguins they just they look rough they don't look as great as what they used to be uh the penguins yeah uh okay well let's start off with my for sure's to make it in this are uh philadelphia and washington for sure um mm -hmm. the, even my, my problem with washington is they have samsonov and he struggled a bit last year. I lean towards it. He's not going to struggle as much this year. I do lean towards that. But we have to see it. And they went out and got Lundqvist for a reason. Because they want to make sure he doesn't struggle this this year, you know, at times. And then, of course, Lundqvist uh, has a heart condition. And I know you're watching King there, uh, I'll, I'll love to you, buddy. Get over that and get back on the ice. That'd be awesome. Uh, but you got Copley and Vanacek, and uh, Copley didn't even have great numbers in the AHL last year. Vanacek did, but do I have much faith in either one of them? Not really. Um, is it possible they can outscore that problem? Yes, that's why I think they're for sure. And uh, with Philadelphia, you got Carter Hart. Elliott's getting a little long in the tooth either, but should be good enough to hold up, and they're a very deep team. Uh, as far as the other, uh, as far as the other two spots, 
that's where I'm with you. It kind of goes up in the up in the air here. Um, for instance, you didn't put the Rangers in the top four, but if Shosturkin goes on a tear like he showed last year, you think the Rangers could make it? There's possibility, I guess, but that's the problem is you got to look. Their defense, I guess, is improving with, like we were saying, Lingren, um, Truba. If Truba has a balance back here, Fox and D'Angelo, it's not the worst looking defense core in the world. Um, but D'Angelo is definitely not the best defensive player in the world. Same with Truba. Their depth, their top nine, is definitely not the greatest looking piece in the world unless they're going to have their prospects jump up massively for them this year. It's going to be kind of a rough year for their, their, their top nine, I feel. So that kind of pushes them back for me a little bit. Now, I do see the Rangers competing for that fourth spot in the division. Now, remember, everyone, there's no wild card spots this year either. So we're just going to be going by division where there's only four teams making it in. So it, it, it it's tough. It really is because I would probably have the Rangers in a wild card spot, especially seeing how weak the Central is. I wouldn't see Florida or Columbus making it in, especially with Buffalo Rangers, Islanders, and the Penguins all kind of jockeying for those spots. But with this, like, I would see the Rangers taking a wild card spot, but I don't see them being able to take that fourth spot unless you get Shortkin absolutely performing and, and, and playing great. That's the only way, uh, way I see them taking that fourth spot. Yeah, that's the thing with me is I really think Shostorkin can 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 crush this 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 year. Also, I may be a little more bullish on their top nine than you are, uh, but I'm going on leans here. Not in you're not go, I'm not going on what we've seen so far, and you can't really because they're so young. Capo Caco, I think it's going to step up big this year. Uh, I think you're going to see a 20 year old kid that's grown into his body could possibly at least put up half a point a game. Alexis Lafreniere, I'm telling you, this guy has got all the tools to put up some numbers already this year. He, um, and if that's the case, and uh, Heidel also moves up like I think he's going to this year, you got a pretty solid top six there with Kreider, Zabonijad, uh, Buknevich. Uh, I think you'd put Panarin up there. They just played too well together to not have Panarin up there. And then Kreider, uh, uh, Heidel, and Kako. And then bring Strom down to the bottom uh, with uh, either that or put Kreider on the third line with Strom and Goche. And that's a pretty solid third line. And then you then Lafreniere up in the second. But that is, I, I'm with you on that. There's a lot of ifs there, right? Uh, and there's a lot of defensive ifs for their offensive core. You've got a lot of offensive talent, and I'm not taking it away from any of the Rangers fans. The team looks fantastic, and honestly, this Rangers team is up there with the Colorado Avalanche of being one of the best upcoming te teams in the NHL. But the one thing I don't really like about their, their core of players is they have a decent-looking team. Just defensively, I don't know if they're going to be able to perform to the way they were because I mean they got their they got their asses kicked by Carolina in that that play in round just by not being able to keep the puck out of the net. Now it could have been King Henrik not being able to save the puck at the time. I don't but think he they played all that had but they, they played bad they, defensively in the playoffs. They did. Sure. Yeah. And they didn't do anything during the offseason to really improve that. They brought in Jack Johnson and they're relying on their players to develop. So I don't know if they're really going to be improving defensively. We'll have to see. But they brought in a lot of offensive talent with Laffey now joining the team. They brought in a lot of offensive talent. And Laffey is not going to be great defensively right off the get-go. He's not. He's going to be that offensive guy. He's going to take a while to develop that uh, defensive talent. He might not ever even be that defensive guy. He might be looking at as that top offensive stud for the uh, the New York Rangers, which I'm really excited about to see him this year as well. I I had huge hopes on Lafarine, and I think he'll do great. But is it going to be enough to push the Rangers into that spot past Buffalo, past Islanders? Maybe, I don't know, the Penguins are pretty hard shot, but maybe even past the Penguins as well. Um, I think it will push them past a few teams. 
The thing is, is their offense is so deep. They can burn. Oh, yeah. t- they can burn a lot of their uh, teams on the third and fourth lines with their offense. Even Brandon Lemieux. If Brandon Lemieux was on a lot of teams, he'd be playing. Uh, he could play in their top six. The guy has offensive talent. Uh, it's not ideal, but he can play there. Uh, he can play up and down the lineup. So, but I agree with you. You got Johnson and Smith as your. That I don't like that. <laughs> that. If anybody gets injured in the top six, and this year injuries will come into play quite a bit, probably with the amount of games they got to play. I'm not big on their defensive depth, and that's where I got to push him out. Mark Andre Miller or K Andre Miller. We'll see what he's going to be, but he's only 20 years old, and they don't really have a lot pushing in the lineup, pushing up the lineup. I imagine they'll pick some players off the waiver wire to get some depth there because they're going to need some depth this year if they're going to be able to compete. So um, uh, when I did the video with uh, the GOAT, John there, John from Off the Wall Hockey, uh, I did mention them as my uh, sleeper team this year that could possibly do some damage because of all of these young players that can step up huge and surprise. Uh, but uh, if I'm going to say right now, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think they're going to be in that top four for this division. So um, now you also mentioned Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Boston, well, there's a problem with Boston, and that's the injuries, right? Yeah, with David Pasternak and Brad Marchand being out of lineup. It, it will be a rough start for the Boston Bruins, to say the least, to get their kind of season underway, especially with those two guys out of your lineup having that, that, that triple head line that we've been used to seeing between Marchand, Bergeron, and Pasternak, one of the best lineups in the league. Now you might be seeing Bjork and Craig Smith playing up on that top line. It might be weakness to start off the season for the Boston Bruins, but, I mean, I this team is always kind of, did good. You got a great goalie in Tuka Rask. They are really looking weak defensively this year. They're in Boston. That's going to be their biggest weakness is defensively, unless you have Grizzly jump up and John Moreau play good. But those are a lot of big ifs. Unless he gets the Dana Char back on the team, it's going to suck without Pasternak and Marchand. And you might see Boston jump down to a fourth, maybe even out of a playoff spot position if those injuries really hurt them into that first month. And especially if you don't um, have, I guess, David Pasternak or Marchand return um, when they need to be, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. uh, I'm suspect with Boston. I'm really on the fence and I know this might surprise a lot of people. I'm on the fence, whether they make the playoffs or not. Uh, I don't, I'm not really, um, Get it, l- losing Krug, I understand. I actually am a big supporter of Matt Grizzly. I think Grizzly can play with mm-hmm. very well. Um, he's never going to be Krug. He's never going to be as good as Krug. I'm not saying yeah. that that's going to be the case. But he definitely can can play in a top four role. And he needed that opportunity to see what he could do. Um, it was going to have to happen sooner or later. I don't really mind the fact that they let him go. But... Um, I do like Lauzon. I do like um, um, I do like Lauzon as well. But these are guys that are really cutting their teeth, just like you said, right? Like, how much of a role are they going to be able to play um, this year? Is it is this the year that they're going to be able to reach that level that allows them to be a strong defensive team? Charlie McAvoy can still is there's nothing but growth there. We're not having any problems with Charlie McAvoy. But overall, on paper, this lineup is eh on defense. That's that's the problem. Like, Boston lost. Like, they had a great team when they made that playoff run, and they lost a lot of talent just by either running out of money, age, whatever it is. They are, they're slowly kind of deteriorating as a team, um, especially Patrice Bergeron. He's 35 years old right now. Marchand's getting up there in age. He's at 32. Same with Krejci. This Boston Bruins team, it's either do or die this year, I think, for them. They they got to know that, that this is a do or die season for their team, and they got to go all for it, right? Like, that's the biggest thing. They got to hope that Marchand and Pasternak return their lineup early 
Uh, Cam Neely hasn't said anything about when they're going to be returning back, but they 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 are expected to turn back in January. That is when they're expected to turn back in. And if they're back for the start of the season, how rusty are they going to be? They did make it decently deep into the playoffs. So, and that might hurt them as well. They've played a lot of hockey these past two years, a lot. And they're about to play a lot more hockey coming into the season. And I think that's going to be the biggest thing against Boston. You look at Buffalo. They didn't play too much hockey these past couple of years. Same with the Rangers. Islanders played a lot of hockey last year, which they, they've they gotten hurt a lot. They've, they're, they lost Boychuk. They lost Taves. And, and same with the Penguins. I mean, Penguins, we... I, we've always kind of like we're pushing them to the side a bit nowadays. But do you what do you think of the Penguins? Do do you think they're gonna make it in, or what do you think they're gonna do? Because I'm a little lost on the Penguins. Because I feel like with Crosby, they could almost do anything, but their defense is just so horrible. Um, I've been burnt by Crosby before. He's one of the greatest of all time. I mean, is not I I can't uh, deny that. Uh, and I wouldn't deny it. Why would I? He, he's unbelievable. If he can do it this year, though, uh, if they make it into the playoffs this year, this is the way I'll look at it, okay? If they make it in the playoffs this year and Crosby has a big year, he's got to get MVP because oh, without a doubt. Um, cause this defense is absolutely porous. I'm not as big of a Demolin fan as a lot of people are. Um, I do like Latang, but he's 33 years old. He's fought through in- injuries his whole career. Uh, is he going to be able to? Is he going to? They need those guys, and so is Demelin, by the way. If they need those guys to have a full year this year, and if they don't, as much as I like Peterson and Marino, that's not what I want as my top two. And then mm-hmm. anywhere, Matheson and CC anywhere in the top four is a recipe for disaster. Um, I love Tristan. Jari, but Casey DeSmith had poor numbers in the minors. Now, he has played well in the NHL because the year before that, uh, it was a year before that or the year before that, he did have some good a- NHL numbers. But um, I- I'm not, I mean, if I'm picking uh, for teams right now, I don't look at Casey DeSmith and say, hey, they're good there. You know, I don't. It's not good. And uh, I- and if either one of them get injured, if, if Jari gets injured, and DeSmith has to play for, I think they're 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 in huge trouble. Uh, off, they went out and uh, Rutherford went out and got some head scratching guys in Mark Jankowski, who had a horrible year in Calgary. Um, he just went like they're they're expecting a lot of players to have rebound years this year. Uh, Ivan Rodriguez, Mark Jankowski, Michael Matheson. Cody CC. He's obviously thinking that Sullivan is a miracle maker and he's going to turn all these guys around and this is going to have, and this, this lineup is going to be okay. Now you do have Ricola there who has his, has some value that can play if Matheson and CC aren't uh, up to snuff. But overall, I think this lineup is in big trouble. Um, and I do not have them in the playoffs this year. Yeah, it's the same with me. Like the only good defenseman, like you really got John Marino's great. Chris Letang, he's been injured all the time, and they've been having to rely on the twenty-three-year-old or Marino. And then your core is Dumoulin and Peterson and everyone else. It's like it's definitely not a good defense core. Their depth is not looking very great. I see him almost near the bottom with the New Jersey Devils, where yeah. the New Jersey Devils can maybe even play better than the Penguins, unless Crosby pulls something out of his buttocks and uh, yeah. pulls some amazing stuff and carries the team into the playoffs but mm-hmm. you got a lot of competition you got to go up against and especially with this eastern division that's so tight and weird and they got a lot of good solid teams in this division it's going to be a rough season for a lot of those teams if you don't get off to a hot start that is the yeah. biggest thing with this league right now with the 56 game mm-hmm. schedule you have to play Right off the get go, you have to get your guns ready. You got to get going because if you lose your first couple games to start off the season, you lose ten games out of the year. Well, now you're forty six games down into the season. You don't got a lot of games to play. This is it, it's going to be some tight hockey. I'm really excited for it to be back on January thirteenth, especially with this Eastern Division. Yeah, that's why I'm afraid of Boston. 
I almost don't that, have Boston. That, in. That's it's, what I agree to because, like, really it is tough. if you miss Pasternak and um, Marchand for the first 10 games of your season, you have them out for majority of a year. You're you, you got Buffalo Rangers and the Islanders that are all chomping for that spot. So, I don't know. It, it no matter which way you put this division, it could go like Doctor Strange could predict this division in a hundred million different ways, man. It's it's a weird division. Even Washington, Washington Philly might not even be on top of the division. You might maybe see Buffalo absolute pop off for Boston, or maybe the Islanders will somehow pull off some sort of miracle run and top the division. This division could go either way. Washington has a weak goalie. Philly, they do have injury problems here and there. So it, it's going to be a weird division in the Eastern Division. And I'm really, I kind of, I'm kind of excited to see how it will all turn out uh, with all these, each individual teams. Yeah. Um, yeah, you mentioned the Islanders there. And we're not mentioning New Jersey because both of us have New Jersey at the bottom of the league. I, I can't see New Jersey. New Jersey even doesn't even want to be anything other than that right now. They're still rebuilding. They need to be in the bottom. It's probably best for them uh, to build up that defense through the draft. But um, I think with the Islanders, I would have had Islanders missing for sure if they didn't have Sorokin coming in. Uh, That kid has put up KHL numbers that are just freaking mind-blowing. Under two points, or under two, uh, let let me bring him up here. Uh, like 9.50 save percentages and stuff like that the last three years. It's absolutely ridiculous. And if you have Barry Trotz system, Barry Trotz is one of the finest defensive coaches maybe ever. With his system, I seriously could see the Islanders making it again this year. If it was Barlamov, who seems to fade all the time and doesn't seem to have all that much of a... Uh, um, it doesn't seem to have much stamina and never has his whole career, I would have had the Islanders out. But with Ilya Sorokin, um, which I'm bringing up his numbers right now just to get the exact ones, uh, 1.33 with a .951. 1.59 with a 0.931. This was when he was 20, 21 years old in the KHL. I mean, he every, one last two years ago, 1.65 with a 0.931. Last year, 1.49, or sorry, 1.50 with a 0.935 in 40 games in the KHL. Those are absolutely ridiculous numbers. I'm really afraid of the Islanders. Um, and I'm, 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 I'm Barry Trotz has burnt me so many times because I've saw on paper. I remember last year I said, if the Islanders make the playoffs this year, Barry Trotz has to win coach of the year because on paper, they were not good enough. A lot of people are saying the Islanders have a great team. No, they don't. They have an incredibly coached team on paper. The Islanders haven't had a great team for three years. Seriously. And Barry Trotz has got him in there every year. So I, I'm going to surprise people here. I haven't said who I'm going to, who I've put in for, uh, I'm going to surprise people this year. I think it's going to be Washington, Pittsburgh, Philly, and the Islanders. And I think Boston's going to miss. I really do. Wow. Uh, I, I think your Buffalo pick is close. Now, this being said, it's going to be so tight it is. And it's going to be by a point. I don't like the Islanders' defense like you do. I'm a little concerned about that. Um, it's going to be really tight, and nothing would surprise me here. And nothing would surprise me really. It, it anything can happen. Like that bottom six. Like I have Buffalo for fourth, Rangers, Islanders, Pittsburgh, and the Devils. Like I can see Buffalo, Rangers, and Islanders all being at a point difference. All of them. I can see them. It could be a point difference from making it into the playoffs. I feel like this division will be, it's going to be one of the more talked about divisions, especially with the Rangers being with Laffey in Buffalo with Hall. It's going to be a really big talked about division with those two teams just in general. It's going to be exciting the way that it turns out to play. And uh, I'm excited to see Laffey in play and 
and like you said with the Islanders, like Sior can give you a huge change as well. And if Sior can jumps up, but that defense score without Devin Taves and Boychuk, it's going to be pretty rough for the Islanders there. What did I say? Did I say Washington Pittsburgh? I think you did. I think you did say Washington. No, Pittsburgh. I don't have Pittsburgh, so I got to do that again. Washington, Philly, Philly, Islanders. Islanders, yeah. And oh, you know what? I do got to put Boston in there. Yeah. You are having Boston uh, making the playoffs? Yeah, I'm not having Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's not going to make the playoffs this year. I don't know what I'm talking about. That's so. what I thought. I'm like, yeah, Pittsburgh's I, second. I will kind of slip Boston in. Uh, but, yeah, it's really tough. Like, I could see the Rangers, Shostorkin going in there, like we were just talking about. Buffalo, like you picked to be fourth, doesn't surprise me at all. If Linus Omark improves every year like he has – they could he could just go off like he just looks like one of those goaltenders that can go off at any time and he's at that 28 year old place where he could end up doing that uh this year that 28 year old that's the, how many goaltenders have we seen hit 28 and that's where they just fly and if that happens here with buffalo buffalo for sure can make the playoffs uh, yeah, and that's without a doubt. Like, you've seen a lot of goalies like that where they have absolutely popped off at the age of 28. So if Linus Olmerich does that for the Buffalo Sabres, then that could be a huge difference for the Buffalo Sabres. And you could potentially see them, like I had in my predictions, them take that fourth spot. Yeah, yeah. So you got Buffalo in. I got the Islanders in. I don't I don't think we uh we don't disagree often but i don't even think we're really disagreeing here it's just kind of like hey, i'll go with that you know that's it um well boys and girls that's our full 42 i'm gonna have don't worry i'm gonna have steel flyers on i'm gonna have joe on and we're gonna go through this division with them as well uh i think i'm gonna do that as well i'm gonna have a whole bunch of people but i wanted to have peyton on we're gonna do each of all the other divisions i know you're all on the edge of your seat and we're also going to do another video here right away, which is going to be, we're going to talk about the Pittsburgh Penguins, aren't we? Yes, we yeah. sure are. So should be, be exciting. Be looking out for that on on, uh, on uh, Peyton's channel, Peyton on the radio. Thanks for joining in, guys. That's our full 42. Have a great day and lots of love to you.